Oh, welcome to it. Hello, good afternoon, happy Friday. Thanks for having me. So that I didn't get directions, but I think it's probably just, okay. So this is about Duran Company, just a little bit. Um, we are an agency that's been in business for 22 years. So the math may not add up since I know you think I'm only 25, but anyway, we've been in business a very long time and uh, we had some existing clients that <clears throat> were in other industries that asked us to come along with them and get involved in the hemp space. And so that was before the 2018 Farm Bill and it's been, it's been crazy ever since. So this is a little bit about us and our office. I have two of my colleagues here today with me and we have a number of clients that are speaking and are exhibiting downstairs. So we do public relations and marketing in the cannabis industry and also in the psychedelics industry. Um, a little bit about, <clears throat> includes some of uh, the clips that we've had when we're working with our clients, everything is very, um, very individualized for each client and each brand that we work with. So we're always kind of putting to, putting strategies together and coming up with new ways to help market and publicize our clients in the cannabis and psychedelics industry, which is super exciting. <clears throat> That's me. We'll skip that. I'm here. Okay. So want to go over a few of our best practices that we talk about with our clients. So stepping back for a minute, obviously cannabis and psychedelics, you know, in events like this merge together, right? They're kind of like emerging industries, if you will, but they are very different and they have to be marketed differently. And there are different roadblocks and opportunities, whether it's, you know, cannabis and even within cannabis, if we're talking hemp or not. So we're, we're lumping them together because it's kind of like emerging industries and they do well together but they are very different in how we approach them on the PR and marketing side and every in branding and everything that we're doing. So um, in terms of our best practices, again, it can be different for cannabis and psychedelics, but um, I guess the biggest thing to start out with is, you know, it, it's not the same for every client. Every client is very different, even within cannabis, even within the hemp space is that what we're putting together is very customized. And so I was talking at an event last night and I had some folks come up to me afterwards and they were just starting out with their brand. And, you know, a lot of the questions were, you know, well, how do I start? What do I do? How do I, how do I figure this out? And, you know, my biggest insight was about being authentic and really taking the time to invest in what do you want the brand to be? Establishing what are your best practices for your brand? Knowing what do you stand for? You know, what, is that, what does that mean? And really taking the time and not rushing to hurry up and get something out there. I think it's really about you know, figuring out what your best practices are. You know, what, what do they look like? What is your brand? What do you want it to be? So we take a lot of time in putting best practices together and we do think it's something that a lot of folks tend to not spend the time doing if that makes any sense so oftentimes when we're brought in with clients we make them take a step back and go okay let's take a fresh look at everything let's really step back because i know even for me as a business owner it it's hard to look within sometimes sometimes you need that other perspective so know your industry um Listen, cannabis and psychedelics and all our alternative products are, you know, fascinating and constantly changing. We're living in a world where I feel like every day I wake up and it's going to be something else in one of these industries that's going to change something that we're doing. I often like to say that I feel that, the, the, especially in cannabis, I feel like the cannabis industry is like dog years where every year is like seven in any other industry. So, you know, we're always staying ahead of, okay, what is the, what's going on in the industry? What's coming down? Um, I don't know if some of you were in the prior, I think some of you were in the prior, we were talking about Delta eight, you know, that's a perfect example. Some States are outlawing, you know, one morning we wake up and another state is outlawed it, or, you know, FDAX may, may say that they're doing something else differently, or they're repack They're now said that your brand needs to have new packaging. They have new packaging requirements and your brand has to redesign. So 
as that continues to fluctuate and change, we have to react to that and what does that mean? And so knowing the industry, knowing what we, what's going on every day, every hour, it, it's fascinating. It's actually what keeps me loving being within this space is that it's, it's always, you know, it's a bit of a challenge and kind of figuring out how am I going to figure this out? Um, when we were brought into this space quite a few years ago, we had to figure out how do you pitch media? How, how, how do we do that where on the hemp side, you can't make a claim, right? You don't, you don't wanna make a claim, you're gonna have a big big issue. And so the first thing when we're working with a journalist that they would say and that they say is, great, well, what are these products? What can I use these products for? And that's making a claim. So we definitely have had to navigate that over the years and Part of what we love is about, you know, what we love about what we do is the education of what we do, um, which is actually on uh, on the next slide. But I think just keeping in touch and knowing what's going on with the industry, legislatively, statewide, you know, is there a new product coming out? You know, is there something in the news that, I hate to say it, but in there's a crisis slide as well, but, you know, sometimes there are things that end up in the news that are a negative thing for the industry. And, you know, perhaps somebody was, you know, allegedly on something and did some horrific act, and then it it comes, you know, front and center, um, and and then it becomes, oh, that's all bad, or oh, that's not good, and and that is something to navigate. Whether or not you're doing PR or you have a PR person, you may get questions for a brand about what's in the product. I heard this. I heard, and, and I, navigating that, you don't always have to have a PR person. It's it's knowing how to navigate those questions and how to react to what may be on the street. I mean, if you have a brand here and you're talking about something, there may be somebody on the floor that's saying, oh, I, you know, I heard that that's, I heard it's not great, or we're moving away from Delta 8, and now we're moving into something else, or, you know, and so I, I think, you know, the really cool thing about what we do is in working with clients up and down the supply chain in the cannabis industry, it's learning COAs and really what do they mean and how do you read it? and as part of what we do in working with the media, we have to help educate the media because this is still such a learning process. And I could also say the same thing on the psychedelic side. It's obviously very different, right? But there still is so much out there that we don't even know yet. And that's the exciting part. But that's also journalists have a lot of questions and there's a lot of still misconceptions that, that we are up against you know, in bo on both sides. And that's what I like is kind of figuring out how to how to take that challenge and like win somebody over or help educate or really just have a, a, a smart conversation about something. So that's kind of, you know, knowing the industry, I think regardless of whether or not you're in your NPR, it's really knowing, you know, what's in your brand, what are those items, what where are you testing, what is the testing methods, you know, and, and really understanding all of those components um, because it's it's critical. So lead with education, that's kind of what I was talking about that we really enjoy. Um, that, that's probably my most favorite thing in getting kind of in this space was when we first started out quite a few years ago, mainstream media, the first thing and we were working with um, some CBD brands and the first thing that they would say is, aside from what can I use it for? Um, oh, is that gets you high? And so we had to explain you know, the difference and what it means obviously in the last four and a half years it's much better and people are more educated right but you throw delta eight in there and then it's even more confusing so as we continue to progress in this field right especially you know in cannabis um there are more questions and there's more being discovered and more being found and with that sometimes it makes it even more confusing um, i mean the good news is that it's continuing to to advance and so we love that, but it can be very confusing when you're talking about educating people. We think about educating reporters, but if you're working with a brand, you need to make sure that you're educating a potential buyer, a potential investor, a potential researcher that you might be, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of that education. And so both with cannabis and psychedelics, obviously we have not even scratched the surface as it relates to research. So obviously there's ex very exciting things. I was just reading this morning um, about some very large donations um, with some of the very, very, very big um, colleges uh, for psychedelics this morning that was just announced, which is very, very exciting. But 
still a very, very tip of the iceberg here. But, um, you know, I think as that research continues to get published and as we continue to progress, there, you know, the opportunities are out there. And the other thing, too, that I would say is given all that we've all been through in the last two years, I think, you know, mental health and wellness and dealing with that, I think it's become more front and center than ever. And I know that the reporters that we work with are very much looking at, you know, how, how do how do people help themselves? And, you know, we see the, unfortunately, the suicide numbers are completely out of control. It's, it's obviously worse than it's ever been. And there are such opportunities to help people. And it starts with education um, and, and research. So um, for us, it's all about education. We look at it again as, as educating the media who then educates potentially consumers when we're dealing with mainstream media. Obviously we work with a lot of trade media and that's very different when we're dealing with cannabis trade or you know trade that's covering the psychedelics industry. They obviously have an insight, which is far different from more of a, of a mainstream media. But when we first started on the cannabis side, I mean, media wouldn't even, mainstream media would not even touch a lot of the products. And I always like to use this little example because people tend to laugh, but it's true. So regardless of whether or not you're a Kim Kardashian fan, put that aside, when she had a CBD themed baby shower quite a few years ago, we thought, okay, regardless of whether or not you like the Kardashians, I leave that up to your individual thoughts on them what a great way for cbd to make you know and and to put an opportunity out there for people to learn about it right to have that discussion and so we didn't have any clients that were that had donated to it but we collectively thought about it and we said you know what let's go out to the media because kim kardashian is putting this in the mainstream this was quite a few years ago things were very very different and it was very interesting with media that a lot of the big national tv shows the big you know the big daily ones, Monday through Friday on the main shows, of course they always cover everything Kardashian, whatever it might be, that's that's their MO, right? And so we went and we pitched them and most of them said, we can't touch it. And actually Sam, who's here, dealt with a lot of that. And they were saying, um, you know, we have a directive at the top, we don't cover that, period, end of story. It doesn't matter if it's Kim Kardashian. Fast forward a lot of years forward, and obviously they're covering lots and lots of that, and their directives have changed. But I think that's a really good thing because at least we're able to have the conversation and get the media coverage and help secure that and help educate people at the end of the day. So again, whether or not you like the Kardashians, we used it as a hook to be able to help educate people. We actually did secure opportunities about our the products we were working with, certainly being very straightforward and saying, we're not a part of this, but if you're doing anything focusing on CBD and you need products or experts, please let us know and we can help supply that. And it worked out very well, but it's a good example of where we were at then and how quickly things move. So it's all about the education where we come from. So tailor your audience. And, you know, I don't know how many of you are with brands or, you know, I'm kind of speaking in, in broad terms, but, you know, tailoring anything to your audience is critical. If you're here and you have a brand, um, you know, who are you going after? What are your demographics? Um, for us, we look at, okay, based on what that brand or that client's, who their identified target audiences are, then we can wrap and put together our PR strategy based on that, right? So there's products that, you know, that skew, you know, men 18 to 35 okay that's you know that's a, a pretty general you know within this space but but then you can dig deeper and when we're when we're talking about veterans or you know people with PTSD or we're talking you know there's a lot of different um, audiences to speak to and for us to be able to do what we do we always need to identify them and sometimes it's evolving a lot of times it's evolving or sometimes maybe one new product will speak more to a certain demographic than others. And so making sure that we understand the audience and the client understands their audience. Sometimes it's, you, we're putting together, we're going through it together. And sometimes it could be, we're launching a new product or adding a product to a, a product line and we're figuring out, okay, no, this is gonna skew more female. And then sometimes it doesn't. And it, that's like the fun part, right? Is figuring out, okay, who likes it? You did research and development, but 
but then like who really wants it? And sometimes it, 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 it can change. And so, you know, really tailoring to your audience and making sure that you're telling the stories that appeal to those those people that are interested in it. So um, it's fun to go through that. I think it's a fun exercise, I'd like to say, with clients as well. So um, anyway, all right, I'm getting the wrap up. So let me go. Utilize the right channels. Obviously, I'm sure most of you know how difficult it is on social media for cannabis brands. It's, it's a challenge every day. It's kind of a, a different situation. Um, we always wanna make sure that we're using the right channels. They can vary based on what your product is, or if you're B2B or you're B2C, it's very different. Sometimes it's directly to the trade. You know, if we're working with a lab that's doing the testing, um, you know, it's primarily to the cannabis trades, but there's also a lot of education going back to that. There's a lot of education that we put together to help educate the consumer. So it does become a little more consumer, not that they're selling directly to the consumer, but it's educating the consumer to look for you know, how to read their labs and how to know what you're ingesting and what, and what you're using. Crisis and reputation management, it's never anything that anybody wants to think about. I, I promise I know that it's not fun. Um, it's also not fun to think about it when you're in the middle of it. So we work really closely with our clients to be prepared in advance. Obviously, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what it's going to be, but um, certainly in these industries, there's usually something. It could be a product is allegedly has mold. It could be, you know, just a variety of things. And, you know, in the, these industries, people are very passionate and they have their opinions. And sometimes it can be on social media. Sometimes something could start on social media or Reddit. And so really being prepared with, um, you know, with a crisis plan and being able to really figure out what is the situation and, you know, no comment is a comment to media. So a lot more crisis than ever. Just, I think that's the world we're living in just across the board. I mean, in every industry, certainly in these, but it's, it's pretty intense. So um, you have to know what you're doing and you really don't want to be figuring it out on the fly when something happens. It's like, let's think about this when it's calm and cool and collected and not like our hair is on fire. So thank you. Um, hopefully I wrap that up kind of quick. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about PR, marketing, branding, anything that you might have. We're local. Our main office is in Fort Lauderdale. We also have um, secondary offices in um, Sarasota on the West Coast and also in Aspen, Colorado. So I'm happy to answer. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. How do you guide your clients when uh, customers are asking, what does CBD do for me or can it help with pain or anxiety or whatever? How do you, how do you reply to that? Well, it's, it's tough because then you're making a claim. And so there are quite a few ways you know, around it. I mean, certainly if, if customers are, I mean, every client handles it a little bit differently, but we're at a point where we are always educating our clients. We can't make a claim. So we're not writing, this can be used for X, Y, and Z. It needs to be another way. So one way that we've done that is have somebody else tell the story, right? You can work with an influencer who can create some content on their own channels that can be shared. So it's not you sharing it. I mean, certainly the last thing you want is, you know, an FDA warning, you know, letter on, on it making claims, but it, it is delicate. We've, we very frequently have to tell clients, you know, this is a little concerning. Let's, let's dial down some of the talk. So, you know, it's really up to the client, but it, it is tough and it's constantly evolving based on what the product is. You know, if we're talking about Delta eight, you know, that's obviously different. We always take the conservative approach. That's just how we are. And, you know, with media, we're always, we're like, we want to get you the sample. So we want you to try it. We're not going to tell you, we want you to try it. And so a lot of clients also in that way will provide samples to people so that they can try it. I mean, but it's tough. I mean, it's, the, it's probably the toughest part of our job in this space is to be able to get publicity and get consumers interested. And you can't really tell them what they can use it for. I mean, like there's no other product in the world or anything that I've ever worked with that I need to promote it, but I can't tell you what it's good for, right? If you're promoting cars, they go zero to 60 in how many seconds? If you're, you know, it's like your features and amenities if you're living in a condo and you're selling the condo and the lifestyle. So, I mean, it's tough. I think it depends on, you know, the products that you have and also letting other people help, you know, be the testimonial. I think that that helps. But 
they're really cracking down on, you know, especially on the Delta 8 and depending upon what state that you're in. Um, Florida, for instance, we do a lot of work with FDACs, which is the ag, um, you know, department with Nikki Freed and Holly Bell. And they've had a hands-off approach and have said that multiple times. But, you know, truthfully, all it takes is, you know, a couple of bad situations for them to, or anybody, you know, to go, we're, we're not going to allow this any longer. So I think it depends on the product to answer your question and also seeing who else can, can put the narrative out there that you're looking for, whether it's testimonials or influencers. So, but of course that takes time and money and they have to try the product. So it's a lot less um, descriptive in our, what we can say about the product. And it's, it's a bit more, um, Normally, if, we're per, if it was another industry, the product descriptions would be really fine-tuned and it would be very specific and it would be very you know, flowery or would have the right information, and, but we can't do that. So it has to be a little watered down, unfortunately. I mean, hopefully this will change at some point, but I mean, we're still waiting. It's been years and we're still waiting. So unfortunately, there's not one answer, but I think it's just trying to find people who can help you tell that narrative so that you're not the ones putting it out there. Does that help? Any other questions? We good? Okay, thank you. <laughs>